Hello everyone, welcome to Dear Love Talk. I'm James. I am Helena. It's always a pleasure to be with you here to answer your questions. Yes. And remember, whatever your questions are to do with relationships, it's a pleasure for us to, to answer them here. So feel free to get in touch. Yeah, all you need to do is to email us on questions at lovetalkshow.tv. And also you have our Facebook page. You can get in contact with us via Facebook as well and Twitter and what else? And that's it, isn't Instagram. it? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, now you can also do like this person whose question I'm gonna read now, who decided to remain anonymous. Yes. And he says, hi both. I've been married for six years and I have a problem that just won't go away. My wife and I argue quite a lot because when we have a disagreement, she wants to sort it out there and then, and I want things to cool down first. This causes even more friction, and after six years together, we are no, close, no closer to solving this issue. Sometimes we don't talk for days because of this. What do I do? Well, the thing is, this is more or less how men and women usually decide to deal with their problems. Men usually want to, they want to go away and have some peace and just not hear anyone talking to them for a little while, just, just silent. And the woman usually wants to resolve things quicker. She likes to talk through her problems. Mm -hmm. You know, usually you will see a man, if he's working on a project, he will sit down by himself and he'll have a notepad and his computer and he will do everything by himself, mm -hmm. gladly. He doesn't invite any help along. So I, I think the, the, the thing here, the, the only solution here, it's for you to try to understand that when your wife is trying to talk through a problem, yeah. right, Lena? It's not because she's, how can I say, she's not trying to instigate mm. a, a problem even further. That's her way of processing the problem. Just like your way of processing the problem is perhaps not to talk at that moment. And even though you prefer to do that, remember that sometimes if you put yourself in her shoes, it, would, it will help her. To, to reach a resolution to the problem even quicker. Yes, and I would like to give some advice to the wife. I, I don't know if she's gonna be watching. I don't know how you're gonna do that. <laughs> Maybe you can send her an anonymous link. Like you did to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it works. Uh, but I would like to send a message to her because indeed we are all different. We resolve problems in diff mm -hmm. different ways. Uh, and, and it's true, we, we want to talk and resolve things there and then. Okay, this is how women like usually to deal with their problem. But I would like you, the wife, to understand him as well. Because men are different. They are not like us. They a like... Little, a little different. They are very different. <laughs> they are very different. So, they are very different, my experience. So, um, they are very different, but it's simple to understand them. Mm. You need to give him space, you need to understand that for them, they process things in a different way. They are very intelligent, we are all very intelligent, but I'm talking about how they deal with the problems. And sometimes they don't want to talk about the problem there and then, and you just need to understand that. So stop forcing, mm -hmm. stop forcing him to understand that you want to resolve things there and then, because it's not working, six years mm -hmm. and nothing. So uh, this is not good, you need to stop that. And, and something else, talk. You need to talk when, you know, go out for dinner, go out and have fun. And after that, when you are on a good, in a good mood, you talk about, you know, you know what happened last week. You know, I know that we argue a lot because of this and that. Let's reach an agreement. Let's meet mm. halfway. I think you should do yeah. that. And, and that halfway, for example, like I was saying for the men, is trying to understand that the woman's thought process, the, the, your wife's thought process, is that she needs to talk about the problem immediately. Yeah. So if for you that's not your cup of tea, you know, try, try this reverse psychology, that if you at least talk about the problem there and then, and you solve it there and then, you won't have to do it again later. Mm -hmm. So push yourself to do that immediately, solve the problem, move on, and you won't have those days where you don't talk to each other because you've solved the matter. Absolutely. You know, I could easily go on and on about this topic because, for example, what if she found a text on his phone, on your phone? You want to know immediately, what is this about? Mm -hmm. It's different. You've got to answer. You've got to answer in quickly, okay? Because you would want the same from her. 
So you see, it takes humbleness meeting halfway, okay? Exactly. And we've got Melanie from the Philippines. Hi, everyone in the Philippines. Hello. <laughs> right, and it says, Hi, Helena, I'm 27 years old and my family keep pr uh, pressurizing me because I'm not yet married. I have been holding on for the, you know, holding for the right person and there is someone I was interested in, but he has very different core values to me. I am not sure if I should consider this person or not, or just keep waiting. Well, one thing I know for sure, you should not get married because you've been pressured, pressured to do that, okay? It's your life, it's your future. So even if you are 99 years old and everyone already has great grandchildren and you don't, I know this is very extreme, but yes, this is how much I mean it, because it doesn't work. Wait for the right person. It's you marrying the person. It's you who will wake up by the person's side every single day. It's you who will have to deal with the person's uh, issues and, and personality and mm -hmm. whatnot. Not your family, not your mom, not your brothers or sisters. So take your time. And just the fact that she's asking us the question already tells you she's not sure, mm -hmm. right? If she should be getting to know this person or yeah. not. And you know what happens usually? People feel pressured and then they go ahead, start dating someone, perhaps even get married to someone. And maybe if they had just held on a little bit longer, not in an anxious way, but just, you know, you wait, you, your life carries on, you're doing all the things you want to do, your hobbies, your, your career, the people that you love, you're close to them. Eventually, it's, it's a matter of life. Eventually, you're going to meet mm -hmm. that right person who has the same values as you have, who has the same... Uh, plans that you have so don't compromise that there are some things you can compromise we always say here you know you can compromise on the color of the person's hair you can compromise on the person's height right mm -hmm. you can compromise on, on a few of these things but you can't compromise on core values mm -hmm. this this is very important and, and just a quick message for the families out there who like to put pressure on their children I think it's very selfish to do that. I'm sorry to use the word it and is. Not, not just children, but all the aunties out oh, there, yes. all the, the grandmothers out there who, who say, come on, my son, you have to get married. It's, it's very <laughs> selfish mm -hmm. because you are worried about your reputation, the reputation of your family. And, and, and that is not fair. Sometimes these, these comments come from a good place mm -hmm. because the person wants to see their, their relatives happy. They, yes, they want some, to see them married. Some do, but some want to keep Indeed. the generations whichever, going. Whichever line, whether it comes from a good place mm -hmm. or because you want your, all your family to be married, you know, pressure doesn't usually work well. No, Remember it ends that. up in, in really bad. Absolutely. Oh. So the last question comes from Sharon Brecken, and she says... My boyfriend is a great guy, but he has a temper problem. This doesn't always flare up. Sometimes we go months without an angry episode. But when he does get angry, he says really hurtful things, and it feels like he comes short of being violent. I really want things to work because he's a wonderful person. Okay. Do you um, want to answer this one quickly, or do I... <laughs> I... I know that if I let Elena answer this one, um, she's going to breathe some fire and There is and a little brimstone. story I want to tell, actually. Hold you on a second. You want to say that story? Hold I'll let you say it. Hold on a second. I'll let you say it. Is it the one about the, the, <laughs> the mother and... Oh, yes. Go ahead and say that one. I'm not going to... I'm gonna, not going <laughs> to tell the story because it goes on a little bit. Uh, let me tell you something. If you're dating and this person comes short of hitting you, that already tells you what's to come. When you get married or when you move in with this person, whatever plans you have, if this person comes short of being violent with you now, what do you think is going to happen a few years down the line when, you know, you forget to buy something that he asked you to buy? You're going to have a big problem. Mm -hmm. Usually, when we get married with someone, all the things that happen when you were dating, they are magnified in a huge way. So if After you have, get married, yeah. absolutely. So if you have reservations, if you see this person has a, a violent streak to him, then I think right now is a good time for you to get the bus and, and get out of that relationship. Unless of course he changes and there's this huge change in personality. Although I wouldn't take the risks. If I were you, I'll take the earliest bus available. Because honestly, it's like, put it this way. It's like a jungle. 
We are not animals. When someone um, hates us or someone does something that we don't like, we go and attack people with our words, with our, you know, beating people. This is animal kingdom. I'm sorry. This is, <laughs> it's unacceptable. Do you understand? I hope you do. I hope it's not too late. I hope, I don't know, I hope that you, you listen to this very wise advice and don't be fooled by the sweet words of, oh, but I love you. I meant, you know, why, when I, I speak, meant well. yeah, and when I speak to you like this, because I love you, I love you nothing. That's disrespectful. So you heard it from Elena. I love you nothing. <laughs> That's a new one to add to the repertoire. Okay. Honestly. When, when he is angry and, uh, and, and he says something very bad and then he says, I love you. Mm. Then you say, I love you nothing. Just like you heard. You understand Elena what I say. mean, right? Or do you want me to repeat <laughs> myself again? <laughs> that was the end of our program today, because otherwise this is going to go on for oh, a yes. very long time. <laughs> but if you do want honest answers to your questions, mm. and please bear in mind, we're going to be honest. Mm. Because, you know, just first to summarize today's program. It is said that the, major the majority of times we ask for an advice, we already know what to do. But we ask because we want people's affirmation. Mm -hmm. So why, why not, if you ask for advice, and sometimes it may not be what you want to hear, but it's the truth, why not just bite the bullet and go for it and, and follow that because you'll be saving yourself a lot of problems in the future. Absolutely. We haven't seen all. We haven't seen it all, but we mm -hmm. have seen enough to tell you, run away when, like when it's a situation like this yes. and when it's I love you nothing, then, <laughs> <laughs> then you know you have to run away, okay? Don't forget you can come along to our seminars as well every Saturday 7 p.m. And feel free to get in touch, send us your questions to questions at lovetalkshow.tv. It's been a pleasure to be with you. See you next time. Bye-bye.